everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I thought I'd do a project share and then a craft with me to craft one together. So what I'm going to work with are these card packs that all of us have. Um, they're fun. They're ready-made cards. They come with envelopes. You can alter them. You can use them as is. Um, or, you know, you could just die cut them. But there are other things that you can make with them that make them go a little faster. Um, Heidi Swap had released a video recently where she made these cute card books. And I thought that was a great idea. I don't have any Heidi Swap cards, but I have a few different collections. And I made a couple that I'll share with you. Um, the first collection I used, well, I have two Maggie Holmes collections. Um, just this generic one and the Bloom collection. So I think I used mostly these and a couple of the Bloom. And I made this card book. Isn't that cute? What it is, is um, it's about 10 cards glued together inside out. So you have really pretty pages and I put a piece of elastic on it and I turned it into a little photo album. This is the first page and I added some um, photo corners and just a removable piece of um, thin card stocks just to show you uh, where the photo goes and I made them a standard three and a half by five size. So whoever you gift it to or um, yourself you could just print out pictures and put them in there. So on each page, I left a, a place for a photo and then a place for journaling on the side. And I'll just flip through it quick so you can see. And each one of these is a card taped to another one. And then you tape them all together, put on some chipboard covers, a few little details, and then you're done. And it's a nice, sturdy mini album. And you can use these books for other things besides photo albums, but I thought, well, photo album's a good idea. It's a perfect size. I guess you could make it an embellishment book, but I want to keep this pretty, pretty flat so it closes nicely. I think, you know, this was the first one I made, so it's not perfectly even, but uh, I think it came out cute otherwise. And then I used this collection, this is from Miss Sparkle and Company. It's a wildflower collection. Got it at Joann's a while ago. I just like all the different uh, florals. See all those florals that you get in there. And I have used these to alter cards and um, just for, you know, paper, really. But for this, I made this cute little mini album. And what I did for, with this is I took a piece of elastic ribbon and just sewed it together tightly so it would make a little band. You could even just use like a hair tie to, to hold it together. And this one is uh, similar to the Maggie Holmes one. I just used black photo corners instead. These I had just gotten at Hobby Lobby on clearance. And this is all florals. And I used just a simple uh, tag die and some wood paper or, you know, wood grained looking paper that I'd also gotten at Joann's. They're pretty. And these are things that you can make with, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody, well, if hopefully you have these, these card books. If not, they, you get them at Tuesday morning or uh, TJ Maxx I've gotten them at. Um, Joann's. See, this one came out better. It's nice and even. Cute, right? Okay, so I thought we could make one together. Heidi Swap has a great tutorial on her channel. Um, I thought I would just show you how I do it because I have a couple little tricks that help me. So, um, and also I'm going to try and edit this video so you don't see all the boring steps. Um, I do apologize, last video. I had some music in there that was a little bit too loud and it was distracting, so I'm sorry. I'm just going to probably leave music out uh, of when I'm talking just because that's annoying to listen to. So, Okay, so let's get started on the craft with me. So I'm going to use cards from this collection. It's the Along the Way collection from Jen Hadfield. 
I got this. I don't remember where I got this. Sorry, but I've had it for a while. Um, this one has 10 different cards in it or 10 different styles for of each. Um, I left these out, the word ones. I just didn't think they're, or I'm going to leave those out. I just don't think they're appropriate for a photo album, but you know, that's up to you, of course. So I already picked out 10 cards. I just doubled up some of the prints. And I love Jen Hadfield's papers. They're different, but they go together, you know? The colors all just work nicely together. And uh, the patterns just leave a little interest, you know? It's not, it's not boring. So you'll need 10 of those. Next, you'll need um, to take another card and cut it in half. So you take a card, cut it in half this way, okay? And that'll give you the front and back cover, which I did with this. I pre-did this already. And you're gonna do this the same size as the cards, which is uh, your standard A2 size, four and a half by five. So do that, uh, one for each cover. And then you're gonna need two pieces of chipboard, thin chipboard, same size, because you're gonna tape the uh, paper to the covers. And then you're gonna need a piece of paper, uh, coordinating paper, about um, three inches by five and a half. And that is going to be the, it's gonna cover up the spine. You just kind of wrap it around. Okay. And then you will need um, a tape runner. This one I got recently at um, Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance, and this works so much better for me than my Scotch ATG. I don't know. That one just always gives me problems. The tape gets jammed, and um, I don't know. I, I'm probably doing something wrong. But this one works really, really well. Uh, it just glides easily. I can see what I'm doing. Maybe it's a lefty thing. I don't know. But anyway, that's good. And... A bone folder is very helpful because you want nice crisp edges on your pages. You're also going to need some elastic. Um, I'm going to use this. I got this pack at um, Hobby Lobby. I use it for traveler's notebooks. But um, I thought these one of these colors would probably coordinate with, my, uh, with the new photo book I'm making. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm going to move everything out of the way take my 10 cards and what you want to do is fold them inside out okay and then just crease them nice on the crease Anyway, all right, so we've got all 10 together, or all 10 folded inside out. Then what you're gonna do is decide how you want the pages to lay out. So it's gonna turn, pretend this is the cover. It's gonna turn, you're gonna glue these sides together. Yeah, that looks fine, good. I don't like to overthink it, just. Okay, that was from before, good, good. Nice. And that's in the back. Okay, that works for me. All right. So, again, make sure the crease is nice and tight. Got all those. And what you're going to do, get your tape runner out. If you don't have a tape runner, um, you know, double-sided tape is fine. I guess you could glue them, too. Why not, right? Okay. So you take the first page and the second page, and we're going to glue it here. I always just glue it on the second page. That just helps me to keep it together, just remember what I'm doing. So you're going to tape as close to the edge as you can, just go all the way around. And then a couple in the middle. Okay. Now this is the part that uh, 
I'll just add my own little tips because, you know, this is a pretty simple project and you can get everything you need from Heidi's video that I'll link below. But um, for me, getting this placed exactly on the other card is hard to do because if you mess it up, you can't peel it off to reposition it. So you're pretty much SOL if you don't do it right the first time. So I like to stand them both up and that kind of creates the exact distance, you know, top to bottom that they need. And then all you have to do is make sure the edges line up. So I just make sure they line up at the spine. Okay. And then smooth it down. Okay. So now we have the first two pages. Okay. So you take the next page. tape runner okay and we're gonna do the same thing make sure they line up okay crease them and you see it's looking good Okay, so that's done, the inside part. All the nice pages. Okay, that's what the spine looks like. Top and bottom side. All right, now let's do the covers. So for the covers, you need the two pieces of chipboard. I pre-cut these, four and a half by five. And we're gonna glue these to, uh, glue this paper to the cover covers. And Heidi had a good suggestion to um, put the tape on the paper then on the chipboard. So that's what I'm going to do. If Heidi Swap says it's a good idea, I'm all for it. Okay. And then we'll just put this on nice and evenly. not even well put on things to cover it up that looks pretty good next one
extra sticky. Okay, and we'll tape this one on. Pretty good, not perfect, but use your bone folder. Get it nice on there. Okay, so now you have the two covers and the photo book. So you are going to glue the or glue tape these onto each side. So we're gonna do that right now. Once again on the paper part. Close to the edge. Okay, let's get this on there. Sorry, I'm trying to pull it closer to me so I could see. Alright, that looks good. Semi good. Good enough. <laughs> And then the back. Okay. Let's get this one on. Start out this way. And let's move that down. So now we have the book. Looks pretty good so far, but we have to cover up the spine. This is where that piece of paper comes in that you cut that was about three inches. You could do it whatever uh, length you prefer, uh, but just make it as long as the cards, which is five and a half. So, um, okay, this is the front cover. So I'd like to leave about, um, I like to make it about a half an inch. And you know what? I forgot to get my scoreboard. Hold on. Let me get that. You don't need a scoreboard, but I find it easier and it makes your creases more accurate. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. Got my scoreboard. Okay. And my paper. So I'm going to score it at about uh, seven eighths. Seven eighths? Where did I want to do? Yeah, seven eighths. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, just score that. And I just want to take the book, fit that over, and then bend it. upside down oh that's upside down isn't it the paper okay you know what? I'm gonna do that again let's do it seven eighths on this side so if you have a directional paper where the pattern is running in one direction make sure you score it the right way all right so now that's the cover. I'm going to have a score in the end, but that's okay. And then just put it right where the crease is on the front cover and then bend it around to the back. You could just leave it like that. Or what I do is I take it off, go back to the scoreboard and then uh, really score it in there. Now this one is going to be, I mean, you don't have to make it exact. I just want to, I can't find the uh, line that I used. Okay. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Let's move this out of the way. All right. So now... I have three score lines, but you should really only have two. One for the front and one for the back of the spine. Okay, so let's 
the front of the book. So this is going to go like this, and I like to leave a little extra space on the back like Heidi does, just to keep it a little more secure. So now what you want to do is you want to put tape on this side and this side. Leave the spine area blank of tape, because that doesn't you don't want that to uh, be stuck down. You want it to be able to move. Okay, so again, as close as you can to the edges for the front, I just... Uh, just do two lines right next to each other. And then the back. You know, do whatever fits your piece of paper. This one looks like three lines. And I need a little more at the bottom. Come on. Okay. All right, and you see that the spine is blank, right? No tape there. Okay. So start with the front, put it right in the middle, okay, just smooth it down, wrap it around, press the back, use your bone folder for that, nice crisp edge, and there you have, there you go. Your little card book. That's sweet. I think these are so cute. And they're um, so handy. Um, I mean, you could send this to somebody and decorate each page as a card and make it a theme, like a birthday or you know, holiday, something like that. Write something on each page. That would be cute. Maybe like a little journal. Put a some pretty lined paper on each side. You could even do a calendar if you had 12 of the cards. Put a printout of a month on each one. That would be cute. Make it like a little planner. Sweet. And for the ones that I made yesterday, um, I just used some stickers, moments to remember, just to kind of give them a clue that they're photo albums and happy memories. Okay, and here is the um, elastic that I was going to use. I think this one, hmm, I'll use the purpley one. Okay, very simple. Just take a length of it. Now, I did this yesterday when somebody else was here so they could hold down the knot I made with their finger and you know I'm by myself so I have my cat Gus here but I don't think he's gonna help he'd probably just play with the string <laughs> so I'll just do the best I can you want to do it really tight because it's gonna relax a little bit as you're tying the bow Okay, some scissors, trim it. Cute, right? So like I said about the photo corners, you could get those um, Hobby Lobby. I don't, I'm sure other places have them. I don't know, I haven't seen them other places, but these are the ones I got. Um, on clearance at Hobby Lobby and what you do is you just uh, take a piece of paper the size that you want to uh, frame in my case it was three and a half by five add these little photo corners on the paper and then stick the whole thing down so that they're perfectly in place another set I had oh, I can't find it now but I used uh, gold ones for for the Maggie Holmes book and those I found in Hobby Lobby, They're, they weren't on clearance. They were in the regular paper studio section. So you can find those there now. Not necessarily the clearance ones I found. Oh, here they are, okay. From, is that not paper studio? The papery shop. You know how they're putting out new paper crafting things in this brand? If you've been to Hobby Lobby lately, you've probably seen that, but 
So, uh, yeah, I, guess, I don't know if they, if they consider that Paper Studio. It doesn't say Paper Studio anywhere. Hmm. Okay, but anyway, that's what I used. So that is the end of my little um, craft along. I hope you enjoyed it. I also did a little shopping today. I thought I'd show you this cute little Christmas tree I got from my craft room. I went to this at home by you. It's like a home decor store. It's huge. But they have all their Christmas stuff out. And uh, I went there because I was watching a video on YouTube by Sweet Crafty Girl. And she had gotten some um, pretty pink Christmas decorations from there. Actually, from a friend of hers. Sent them to her because she doesn't have an at-home by her. So I said, well, let me go take a look. So I bought this cute little teacup tree. Isn't that sweet? It's like a very pale pink. And the tree has like little silver streaks in it too. It was $12.99. And then it has this pretty little like mother of pearl kind of opaly teacup. Isn't that pretty? So I thought I would put some little fairy lights on it, put it in my craft room. I secretly have a tree already for my craft room, but it's small and my craft room is pretty large, so I think I need more than one, don't you? Yeah, thanks. Me too. Okay, so I will leave the links below to um, the people that I mentioned. Thank you for the inspiration and I hope you enjoyed this. Any questions, let me know and I will talk to you guys later. Okay, bye.